All right, guys. So now that we've got this working like it was before in 5.4, we're going to come back over here into the smart object definition and check some things. Or at least I am. You don't have to, but I just want to look at. OK, so we need to enable this is entry. So I had y'all disable that before we're going to re-enable that. We're going to leave this like it is for now. If we need to add an activity tag, we will. So back over here on the bench state tree, what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate this. And we are going to label this one entry two. I'm going to rename this to primary role name. And this one, we're going to make a name and we're going to name it secondary role name. Or if you, depending on whatever you label your secondary slot, dependent or secondary or whatever, and this will be entry two or whatever you named that within your contextual animation. So you can double click on this context anim and whatever this row is right here, which is entry two for me, that will be what you set the secondary role name to. So on here, we're going to need to bind that parameter on these, and it looks like we're gonna have to go back and bind it on these other ones too. It seems that whenever we upgraded it, any bound variables got unbound. No, maybe it was just from duplicating it. Might wanna go back and check anyway. Yeah. So as far as the section names go, those are going to remain the same. Yeah, okay. And that's pretty much it for that. So on these entry, on the entry one state and on the entry two state, we're going to check the claim handle. We're gonna do an enter condition right here. And we're going to go to gameplay interactions smart objects and match slot tags runtime tags you could do activity tags if you wanted but we're going to do the runtime tags and exact match and this one's going to be primary And we're going to do the same thing on this one, except secondary. Oh, and we need to bind these to the claim handle, slot handle. And I like to clear this, actually, because it's, well, it's still yellow, but whatever. OK, so. That should be good for these. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that we only enter here if the slots match. And let me just make sure. Yeah, that should be good. All right, so. Okay, my right mouse button's messing up. Let's see here. And so you'll notice that right now we have this disabled, so we're going to re-enable it so that we can test it. And then we'll set up the logic to have it only enable it only enabled whenever this one is enabled. Of course, for this 
case, since this is a bench, it's not really important that we're able to enable and disable this slot. But in some cases, you're going to want a slot to be dependent on another slot uh, for things like conversations and uh, interactions between characters. And so that's the reason why I want to cover that. So even though that it's not actually really necessary, uh, we still need to do it. And so you'll see now they're going to the, oh my God, my right mouse button. I got to get a new mouse. So you'll see we fixed that problem. Now I did try uh, my ideal for a fix for uh, that jumping and I actually didn't fix it. So that problem lies outside of the animation system. And I, I don't know what exactly is causing it. I thought what was happening was that on the animation, uh, I thought that on this animation blueprint right here, I thought what was happening was it was blending out of this into this, but whenever I set up logic uh, for it to remain in a sitting pose, and so it would blend out into the sitting pose, it was still doing that. So it must have something to do with some kind of weird bug somewhere. I don't know. I'll have to get back to you guys on that. So, I mean, I've been wrong with about bugs before in the past, so it it's possible that I'm wrong in this case, too. It might not be a bug. It might just be a lack of understanding on my part. <clears throat> 